Hello, welcome once again. Um, I wanted to clear up uh, some circuits, talking about some circuits that I spoke about yesterday in the videos um, where I got various comments from people. Usually when they get comments, I want to address those comments and clear up any confusion. We spoke about yesterday a short circuit, which is the most important thing when it comes to automotive electronics, any electronics. A short circuit to ground is a, is a problem. Depending where the short is, it is a short circuit, but not necessarily a short circuit to ground. A short circuit to ground means here's a short from here to here. A short circuit to ground means is a short circuit from here to here. A short circuit to ground from here to here will blow the fuse. Why? Because it's after the fuse. This is after the switch. This is after the fuse. This is before the fuse. A short circuit from here to here. What will protect it? There's no fuse be here between here and here. The fuse is after. What will protect this if I have a short, and let's draw it in, to ground? What will protect me from that? Nothing. This wire will melt. The high temperature will melt the wires. And as much as the battery current can give, it can give. But obviously, this is the worst condition possible where you have no protection. A dead short to ground. Another dead short to ground we just spoke about is over here after the switch. So what will protect me? Hopefully the fuse. That's the worst case possible. Okay. Now, <clears throat> a comment was... Um, was given to me sent to me actually uh, after the those previous videos that i sent i want to thank the the viewers because actually last night was the most minute viewed i had in in the history of the channel so thank you for that now <clears throat> let's understand the concept here <clears throat> here's this wire right here from here the switch to here to the terminal okay now this green wire represents this wire one term of the switch to this terminal going to the light bulb this is the green wire let's say you have a wire going from the pcm going from mass airflow sensor to a connector it broke represented by the yellow wire it broke you see the strains this wire was attached to the connector of mass airflow sensor intake air temperature sensor any connector and it broke on us now it's just dangling in the air as it broke it didn't make contact with anything in engine ground or anything but it's just laying there okay and you know it's going to move around because of vibration and things like that so it's bound to hit a metal ground or chassis somehow but right now it's just dangling there is that a problem Will this blow the fuse? Absolutely not. Why? Because this is open circuit. Even though this is not supposed to be in this scenario, this wire dangling, nevertheless, it's not making contact to anything over here in the circuit. <clears throat> okay? Let's take it a step further to make the... Uh, the uh, uh, I, forgot, I think his name was Jonathan, uh, the comment that he sent. Anyway, um, okay, Jonathan... Now, let's say this wire, while well, that, that, it's dangling, I'm driving and driving and driving, I hit a pothole. When I hit a pothole, I've, and then the wires tend to move. It tends to move. This is this wire, is the green wire, represented over here, we said. Let's say this wire that's exposed, you can see the conductor, this is the insulation. It touches this wire, it touches this. Is that a problem? No, even though it touched the other wire, the conductor, the bare conductor, as is an alligator clip here, is not making contact to this conductor, right? So it's not a problem. Now, even though it's touching the wire, let's take it a step further. This wire that was broken from the mass airflow sensor from the connector, there's three wires going to that connector. The, this is the B plus wire and it broke on us again. In this over here, now it's making con it's now I'm driving and driving and driving and driving, right? 
Now this is connected to a bulb. Let's say. While I'm driving, guess what? Now, while it was dangling, I hit a bump. Boom. Now I touched the conductor part of this one to the conduct conductor part of this one. Now I have a problem. Now my lights went out or the bulbs went out. Why? Because the bare conductor, the bare wire is making contact to another bare wire. That's a problem. Okay? That's when your problem is. When you crimp two wires together, what do you do? You strip one wire to the conductor and you strip the other wire to the conductor and you solder them together. You don't crimp two insulations together. This is insulation, this is insulation. You don't put two insulations together. That's not a connection. You put a conductor to a conductor. So therefore, let's take that a step further. I have a short circuit. I just told you, the word, when you have a blown fuse, first thing comes to your mind, I, have a, I might have a dead short to ground. Not a short, but a dead short to ground. That's the first thing that should come to your mind. And you look at it and you say, what would give me a dead short to ground? Right here. This to this. This to this, the ground. Let's... I just spoke about this. What would happen if the two wires touch? Okay? The broken wire, the broken wire, represented by this, is touching this wire. That's a problem. Let's see. If I have a short here, from here to here. Is this short? Is this short? That's a short. That's a jumper wire. Is that a problem? No. But... Isn't this ta isn't this wire that's exposed uh, touching the other exposed wire? Is that a problem? No. Because look at it. What is it doing? It's just going across another wire. So the main point I'm trying to focus on or to stress depends where the short is. This wire, as long as this is connected, all these are connected, guess what? So the current will come here and say, oh, okay, I have a new branch for current to flow. It'll flow here, right? Wherever there's a connection, it'll flow. It'll flow here, it'll flow here, it'll flow here, it'll flow here. No problem. The, the problem is when you go and you have a jump a wire and you jump a component. When you jump a component, you're bypassing a component. When you're bypassing a component, majority of the time you are decreasing the resistance. Even though this is a bulb, there's still a filament. There's still a filament, still has resistance. Not high resistance, maybe 10 ohms, maybe less, doesn't matter. Compared to zero ohms, short to ground, it's still a resistance. So when you're bypassing this, that's when the problems begin. Okay, I hope that was informative, and Jonathan, I hope that answered your question. Now, to get to something different, or on the same line, but different theory, we spoke about grounds yesterday. We spoke about grounds. This is a ground from the terminal. Everything, every connection has to get back to the battery somehow. And we spoke about it. After the load, you see this is considered the load, this is the switch, this is the fuse. It shows you the current flow, not voltage. Not voltage. Voltage does not flow. And sometimes people use the, the term power. You have power here, you have power here. That's Power is in watts. We do not have power. We have a voltage, we have a difference of potential between here and here. That's a voltage. Or a voltage drop from here to here. Current, when you see arrows, like you see in my uh, um, schematics, that is a direction of current flow. How it is flowing. And the reason I do that is to make it easier. When you see the arrows, you understand how to follow the schematic much easier. You won't see that in Mitchell or data. They don't give you the arrows where it is. You have to figure it out yourself. I do it to make it easier for the viewer, for the beginner who's trying to learn. We're going here, follow the arrow, follow the arrow, follow the arrow. Now, this is what I wanted to stress. The negative is here, and the negative is here, the ground is here. How did I get from here to here? Well, we're using a metal frame. Metal frame is a conductor. 
the body, the chassis, is still a conductor. So here's a little symbol here. Where does it continue? The ground, right here. I can use this. <clears throat> I can use this instead of putting a single wire from here to here. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine? If I would go back to the battery on every single connection, if there's a hundred connectors and I would keep on going back to the battery, do you know how many wires I would need a harness wire to go back to the mine to, to the negative terminal? Instead, we go to chassis, we go to for we find uh, uh, anything metal, because metal is a ground potential to the when this is connected to the battery the negative, then that gives me permission to use anything here to complete the path as a ground return line. Okay? That was a question that I was asked to me. It doesn't make a difference. You know, you, you don't have to use a hard wiring. You could use a metal. Okay? It is a conductor. Another point about yesterday about the video that I made about fuses. I stressed the point that fuses today are also color-coded. Now, these are called, and I showed you a chart. That chart represents the color of the fuse, but these are called maxi-fuses. Maxi-fuses are these, the big ones. If you're looking for a 20-amp fuse, you will be looking for what color? A yellow one. A yellow this is a yellow if you're looking for a 30 amp fuse a maxi fuse you'll be looking for a light green they put in the stripe of green anyway that's for maxi fuses there are now fuse link color coding there are different types depending on the different types of fuses but the point being made here when you have the fuses over here Okay, they are, you can see the current on each one. Now, the problem being, sometimes there's multi-fuses with the same rating. So, you're going to look at the fuse cover. The fuse cover will dictate to you or will, will label the correct fuse with what you're looking for. So, let's say I'm looking for ECU or PCM fuse. I'll be looking for probably a 10 a 10 uh, or a 7, a low-rated fuse. So I'll be concentrating on the red ones. But I don't have to worry about the colors because you know why? I have the label on the cover of the fuse panel. The point I made yesterday was not all cars and automotives are, are so forgiving and are so generous to us to give us the label of each fuse, what they stand for, what they represent, not Ford. Therefore, the, the point I made was, if you have a fuel pump issue, you're dealing with high current. High current, dealing with this. A starter motor, you're dealing with high current. If I'm dealing with a sensor, a small sensor, there's no connection or no 12 volts or whatever, then I'll be looking at the low ones, the low rated ones. If you Go back to the video on, the, on Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, that's the point to be made. The fuses that we use, obviously, in automotive is this one. We don't use this one. This is used in uh, power electronics. This is used in uh, PCM boards or things like that. These are not used in automotive. The blade fuse, as you see, this is the one that we use. Okay, the symbols is the fuse, like a sine wave, AC sine wave, and this is a circuit breaker. A fusible link looks like this not all the time sometimes it looks different gets to the next point okay the textbook teaches us something as i stress because someone made the comment this textbook is outdated and i really stressed the point strongly yesterday um no this electronics has everything to do with the electronics of the present time you can look at this relay. This is a configuration of a relay. This relay is in all automotive cars, regardless, Asian cars, regardless of Toyotas, regardless of Hondas, regardless of Chevys, regardless of uh, Lamborghinis. I don't care. This is this. This is 25 years ago. Today we still have relays. This is the symbol for it. Okay. 
85 and 86 are always the co the control side, the coil side, and this is a resistor across it. Always. 87A and 87. 30. If you want, if you want to find 85 and 86, this is looking inside the fuse panel. These are the terminals. This is where you plug this in. This is where the connections are made. Looking at 85 and 86, let's try to find both. Which one is 85? Which one is 86? This is color-coded for you. What a great textbook this is. I'm t without this textbook, I would never be successful in my life without this textbook. Look at this. It's color-coded. Okay? Now, green over here, 85. As you can see over here, it's over here. Now, 85, 86 is this one right here. 85 is the coil ground. 86 is the coil battery. So this would be how much over here? This would be 12 volts. Oops, 12 volts. And this would be the ground, the ground symbol. Could be a physical ground, could be a computer ground. That's not important right now. Right now, we're just trying to learn how to label and be familiar with the relay. Now, next one, 30. 30, common feed. Okay? This usually is the B+. Plus. Okay? This is the B+, plus that goes from the circuit. 12 volts, whatever. This 30 is where? The orange one over here. Where is it over here? This one, the orange one over here, the common feed. The common line, the bus line from the 12-volt line. That's what I mean by common. 87, 88, 87, this is the tricky part. This is where it toggles. When this works, this is toggled. Now, 87 is being connected to 30. Where is 87? 87. Now, 87 is... 87 to 30, now you have a connection from here to here. What does that do? If this was 12 volts, now it gives this one 12 volts. Okay? That's what they mean by 87, 87A. So the 87A, <clears throat> not too much importance to that. The most important, remember I always told you, where do you measure 12 volts? This is 12 volts right here. This is the main point. If you have 12 volts here at 87, all of this is working. Instantly, instantly. This is, I always remind you, think of the year 1987. Anything special happened in 1987? Your, your team won the Super Bowl or something, or your wife had a baby. Think of 1987, 87. That's where I measure everything. Now, looking at the terminals, looking at the terminals down. 86 over here, the brown one, where will it make contact with? This one. 30, where will it make contact with when I plug this in? This one. Where will this one, 85, make contact with? This one. Where will 87A be? This one. What about 86? This one. So all these three in a row, when you plug this in, will be making contact with this one, this one, this one. These two going the opposite directions or vertical, I guess you call them, or horizontal, will be making contact with this one. That's how you learn how to read diagrams. Not only was it helpful for me to understand the color codes and I understood the relays, but also when you plug them in, how to read these type of diagrams, the terminals themselves. Very important. So I hope this helped you how to understand the relay. Main point is, as you can see over here, main point to 86 is 12 volts. Ground. 12 volts. Now this becomes 12 volts. This is the most important way to measure, as I did in the videos. Let's go to one final thing. You will always have colored wires, color-coded wires. This is a chart. Of the, of the abbreviation for each one. I made a video quite a while ago, but obviously it really bombed. So maybe I could bring attention to it again. If you don't, if you look at the schematic and you're not sure of the color codes of the wires, this is the abbreviation for each one. And more or less in makes and models of automotive, this you can use this as a guidance, as a template, so to say, I guess. So please try to 
uh, take a picture of this, whatever you want. And this will be very helpful. Purple, PPL, PR. Red, most of the times is R. Sometimes it's RD. Okay? A violet wire is V, and that's it. A white wire is sometimes abbreviated W, sometimes abbreviated WH. Yellow wire is Y, sometimes YL. Usually I see Y. <clears throat> but anyway, please use this. If you're ever in doubt of the color of the wire, please use this as your chart. Anyway, thank you so much for the views yesterday and for the... Um, uh, for the minutes watched, tremendous, tremendous. Um, uh, go to my channel, Joe Electronics and Magic for Auto, and then I have another one. I'm trying to get monetized um, on a mode of electronics and Magic for Joseph. Then I'm going to go to two channels, something entirely different from electronics. Leave electronics and go to something else. But anyway, thank you so much.